Hello, my name is Christoph Corell. I'm a professor of psychiatry at the Hofstra North Shore LIJ School of Medicine. And this is the expert corner for psychopharmacology. I'll be summarizing the data on antipsychotics in children and adolescents with severe psychiatric disorders. Several antipsychotics have been approved for treatment in schizophrenia, bipolar mania, autism associated with uh, irritability, as well as for the treatment of aggression. The data that have been as, uh, accumulating are based on placebo-controlled trials that companies have performed in order to satisfy the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, as well as EMA, European Medication Agency's requirement for collecting pediatric efficacy and particularly safety data. Data uh, in schizophrenia, uh, these are adolescents aged 13 to 17, have been compiled in six-week studies, eight of them, and five antipsychotics have been approved. These include aripiprazole, olanzapine, quetiapine, risperidone, and paliperidone. Two studies have been negative, and this included asenapine, but only at doses for ranging from 5 to 10 milligrams, as well as ziprazidone, which ranged based on dose adjusted do, uh, weight adjusted dosing um, up to 80 to 160 milligrams in the heavier kids and 40 to 80 milligrams in the younger and not so heavy kids. Both the failed or negative studies with uh, ziprazidone and asenapine were nearly significant, so basically um, no approval, but suggestion that there is clearly a class effect of dopamine uh, blockers and modulators working in children or in adolescents with schizophrenia. Bipolar mania data suggests that again uh, aripiprazole, olanzapine, quetiapine and risperidone, as well as asenapine, are effective versus placebo in patients with bipolar mania, both pure mania and a lot of mixed mania that is more frequent in children and adolescents. Data were collected in three to four week studies and they included patients aged 10 to 17. In addition, data are available against placebo showing that our piprazole and risperidone are effective for reducing aggression and particularly irritability associated with autism and uh, the indication is for 5 to 17 years of age with risperidone and 6 to 17 years of age with our piprazole. Now, when looking at the use of antipsychotics, they are used a lot for aggression, which is a non-specific symptom in the context of child psychiatry. But the data that are available are the best with risperidone against placebo, mostly in patients with sub-average IQ and disruptive behavior disorders, oppositional defiant disorder, conduct disorder. But uh, clinical use is often even in people with ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, um, which is hard to justify, but clinicians often use these medications to lengthen the fuse, help people be less impulsive and aggressive. However, practice guidelines and research suggest that one should rather first optimize treatment with stimulants for ADHD, which often then curbs the aggressive symptoms with an effect size even of 0.6, which is a pretty good effect size for stimulants. And clearly, even before using medications for aggression, one should clearly first do a good assessment of the triggers as well as psychosocial environmental uh, risk factors and use non-pharmacologic treatments as much as they're available, parent training, patient behavioral treatments and so forth. In terms of head-to-head -head studies, there are relatively few, um, particularly in schizophrenia, but there is one study in autism where risperidone and aripiprazole looked relatively similar. And in mania, there have been head-to-head -head studies comparing antipsychotics with mood stabilizers, suggesting that at least for the pediatric mania, which is often more flavored by irritability and rapid cycling, as well as psychosis, antipsychotics seem to have better efficacy than mood stabilizers, namely valproic acid, uh, carbamazepine, or, or lithium. While the differences between antipsychotics for severe mentally ill patients in efficacy are relatively small and hard to predict, differences in side effects are much easier to predict and much larger. And here the side effect differences follow very much what we know from the adult literature. However, 
the symptoms are somewhat larger and um, patients are more sensitive to certain side effect clusters. Obviously the cardiometabolic side effects are the most concerning because they can have long-term implications for survival and cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So here what clinicians need to do is not just to monitor for efficacy and helpfulness of the medication periodically, but also systematically monitor for side effects. These include um, blood draws for glucose, fasting, as well as fasting lipids, liver function, and uh, if there is no fasting possibility or um, you can add it, then hemoglobin A1c can be very helpful as a sensitive marker for insulin resistance and emerging diabetes. In addition, um, one should monitor at least three monthly for uh, extrapyramidal side effects, doing a simpson angus scale and maybe three to six monthly uh, in that normal involuntary movement scale. Doing all of this is good clinical practice and helps to assure that patients reach the most benefit from the antipsychotics that they have, but also are uh, safe as much as possible. When side effects occur, one may have to consider a switch to a lower risk medication and always reassess is the antipsychotic for particularly non-psychotic patients even indicated. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much for your attention.